it's time for infamous emails. Oh my fucking god, I'm gonna get a boner, yeah. God, our theme song is so fucking good. I wish it was. We could just, like, make a theme song. I, we could totally do it. We could. We, I can play music. I know how to play music. Yeah, I can, um, not. But we'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I'll just do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck you too, Josh! <laughs> Uh, on M-Class email, we receive emails from our loving listeners, and we yeah. lovingly answer them with love. <laughs> That's a lot of love. It's a lot of love going around. Oh, um, yeah. I want to front load the episode by telling you that if you want your email read on the air, you can send it on in to mclassemail at gmail.com. M-Class email, singular, like the name of the show now. We changed the name of the show. Yeah, fuck everybody who wants to Google M-Class emails now. Yeah, <laughs> the, e the SEO for this show is great. We it's, got a great SEO. We have at least 500 listeners, so we're doing <laughs> good. <laughs> Nailing it! So, why don't we hop right into our emails today. Our first email of the evening is from... Actually, let me see what he wants me to call him. Okay. Uh, Sebastian Bustos. Sebastian. Who I apparently pronounced his name right last time. But Sebastian. Who, who the fuck Say knows? <laughs> who the fuck knows if I pronounced it right this time? What does he say? He says something like, like, Ice Princess or something like that. Like, he says some weird... Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, God. What, are you, what are you quoting? <laughs> Never ending story. Oh, fuck. And she's like talking to him or whatever. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that in a long it's time. It's like, no, it's like Moon moon Glow or something. Yeah. Like, moon Glow or something like, something like that. God, I haven't seen that movie since I was like 10. Uh, it was on Netflix for a while, so I watched it like when I would go to sleep. I'd put it oh. on. You go to sleep to the like beautiful sounds of the horse dying in the swamp. Artax. I was never like a, I didn't care about horses, so that that. I still bother. don't care about horses. I, I don't like. I don't really like horses. I don't either. Well, the thing is, like, I was fine with horses, and then like, one year at college, I went home for the summer, and I was like trapped there because I didn't have a car. Okay, and so you rode a horse everywhere. No, so my family like used to have like Direct TV up there, but they just let it lapse. So they right. only had like the channels that they give you for free when you yeah, like, the they're trying to get you channels. back. Yeah. And one of those channels was the Farming Network. We don't have that where I live. And it was just a channel about horses, and my mom loves horses. Oh, uh, so pretty much any time I was home there was just horses on the fucking tv so i yeah. grew to despise them <laughs> do you know my one horse fact that i know uh no josh please tell me your horse fact uh, uh palomino is the only horse that's a breed and a color holy shit and i think i'm gonna go ahead and dedicate that fact to zane there you go zane i hope did you know that zane do you listen she doesn't listen she to doesn't this. listen to this <laughs> <laughs> um, Sebastian says, my dearest Shrek boys. Oh, shit. Wait, wrong podcast. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait. How have you, is there a Shrek boys podcast? <laughs> Shrek boys? Uh, so Where how is now? So how have y'all been? Good. Uh, bad. I've only ever sent one email in and have been meaning to send another one, but always forgot until it's too late. Every well, you did it. Yeah, congratulations. You remembered. I have a few questions for both of you, and maybe the lovely Kevin Cole? Nah. <laughs> nope, not today. I, I mean, I talked to him today, but he's not... That's not now. That was no, earlier that was No, that was before, and now is now. Now is now, and that was before, yes. Man, I'm learning so much in this podcast today. <laughs> I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm going to preface this with how much I have to thank you guys for convincing me to watch DS9 via the sound See? waves you put out each week. See? You guys got to listen to us. We know what we're yeah. talking about. We are right all the time about everything. It's true. Why wouldn't you listen We've to us? We've never been wrong in our entire lives. I've never been wrong about anything. It's true. He never has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's seen it through twice now. And it might yes. have knocked TNG out of uh, out of place for the, his favorite series. It'll do that, man. I'm not even kidding. It'll do that. It, it might do that. I I put it on a pretty even gear with TNG. Like I still yeah, like I TNG more. 
I don't know if I could pick. Like, I don't think I could. I mean, they're both great in their own way, and that sounds lame, but it's honestly, true. It's true. Yeah. They're very different shows. Yeah, but I still think TNG is my favorite track. Well, if you like DS9, uh, this counts for you too, Jeff. Uh, go watch Battlestar Galactica. What is that? What? What is? <laughs> what is that? What? But what? I didn't say anything. Battlestar Galactica? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the one that was the one you went with I'm proud of it I mean <laughs> <laughs> Battlestar Gafaptica porn parody we gotta make it there it is uh, I'd watch that one too it's much shorter one thing I'll probably watch that one instead <laughs> I'll get the yeah. jizz of it uh, oh one thing always God. confused me about the way Ferengi and humans interacted. All the Ferengi care about is profit, and that is basically the last thing most humans care about, to the point where they yeah. don't even own money. So, how do the humans who frequent Quark's bar pay for their food and drink? The Starfleet... We have addressed this. Yeah, we have addressed this. But, no, I'm not saying that, like, that's a dumb question. I just, we have talked about yeah. this. Yeah, we talked about it before. Saying. Like, we figured out that uh, the, the Federation probably gives a stipend... Yeah, you get, like, a, an allotment of latinum. Yeah. And they probably also, um... Well, in Quark's bar, at least, like, Quark has an understanding with, uh, Cisco. That's the right, only reason Quark is still rent. there. Yeah. So he the Federation people might not pay for most of the stuff they do there anyway. Yeah, I think they... I mean, like, you see Dax, like, gambling with latinum with yeah. Quark when the, she plays Tongo. Like, so they definitely get Latinum, and, like, I, I don't think there's anything stopping Federation officers from, like, earning Latinum. No. I mean, maybe maybe there is some kind of, like, regulation that says you can't, but, I mean... I mean, Dax is flaunting that fucking regulation yeah, horribly. Yeah, she's gambling though. like crazy. Like, she might be a gambling addict. Maybe. But She's yeah, good though, so no one minds. I mean, that's but that's part of it too. Is like, like the when the Ferengi and the Klingon, uh, the, sorry, when the Ferengi and the Federation uh, first encounter each other, they they don't like each other, and it only it's only because of like uh, the war that really the the Federation starts to see kind of the value, and not that's like kind of a cold way to put it. They start to like understand the Ferengi better. Yeah, right? I mean, there was definitely a gap. In understanding between the two races before the yeah. war, like there was yeah. there was no common ground before they were like in the trenches right. together, so to speak, you know. But Zek and Rom later really like bridge that gap because Rom kind of buys in to what the Federation like stands for, right? And Zek kind of is more progressive, like he lets women wear clothing and he like yeah, well he's like easily vote. swayed as well is why. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's he's like I'm gonna get sex, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Ishka. That's his mom's name. Yeah, right? I just find it so funny that the, one of the major plot points of Deep Space Nine is that the leader of the Ferengi Alliance is fucking Quark's mom. It's great. <laughs> oh, God. I, they, that they cast uh, what's his name, the uh, guy from. Oh, uh, I, can't, I can't remember his name now. I'll look it up. It's like the fucking perfect cat. He's so amazing, good. is the thing. I, he's great, dude. Um, he continues, uh, Secondly, you guys have talked about how much you like and respect Red Letter Media. What are your thoughts about Mike's Star Trek opinions and videos? The video speculating about the new Picard series was pretty neat, in my opinion. I watched most of that. I, I haven't finished it yet. I I mean, I, I... I don't always agree with the things that they say. Yeah. I find that Mike is a very knowledgeable Star Trek fan, and I, I respect his knowledge of Star Trek, and I I like that he likes Star Trek. Um, you have to remember about Red Letter Media that they are a show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, their, and their job is to be entertaining, just like Continue is a show, right? Like So the things that they say uh, might not be like their opinion all the time, I think it's kind of good to remember that. It's about true. Them. Like a lot of the more shocking Star Trek things that they might say are obviously meant as a joke. I also think that they go easier on it than they than they would. It's true. Uh, on 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 the. I mean, they kind of tear the JJ movies apart a little bit. Well, that's the thing is like I tend to because it's always Mike and Rich 
talking about yeah. it. And I tend to like gravitate more towards Mike's opinions of Star Trek than oh, Rich's. Absolutely. absolutely. Rich yeah. is like a, a like a JJ Abrams apologist. Just like everybody else. Great. He's like he's not like everybody else. He still thinks the movies are shit, but he's always like finding reasons why they're not that bad or like talking yeah. talking about how like discovery isn't as bad as people say it is and everything. He has and, yeah, he has more of the like whatever mentality about it. Yeah. Right? And, and I he's, and I he's don't not have like that. He's always pointing out, like, I'm not the type of, like, uh, basement-dwelling nerd that cares about, like, what type of ship they're in or what type of phasers right. they're in. That doesn't matter to me. But that's, and, like, half the fun of being a Star Trek fan. That's the honestly. exact kind of, uh, like, basement-dwelling loser nerd that I am. Yeah, I am a super... <laughs> I mean, I'm on the second floor right now, but, I mean... Second floor is just the basement to the third floor, so... The second floor is the up basement. <laughs> <laughs> it's the inverse basement. Um, the antipode basement. I do think that Mike sort of wavers in his opinions quite often. Like he he'll start yeah. with like a very strong opinion in one video and then have like almost the opposite opinion later. That's what I mean. I I feel like the show is like they're doing a show and like sometimes you're not like I know that like a lot of people like to think that, like, everything anyone ever says is, like, the absolute truth in their heart or whatever, but that's not true as a comedian or whatever I am. I don't know. Uh, that's not always true. Internet like, comedian. Internet comedian. <laughs> there, yeah. Like, sometimes I'll say a joke just because I think it's funny, and it's not something I believe at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's called humor. It's called, yes. It's called also a acting. It's a certain level of acting involved. And yeah. Red Letter Media definitely does that. And they know about acting because they make movies, so. Um, I, I think it, pretty much the gist of it is, the, like, we both like... Don't you mean the jizz of it? Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I misspoke. <laughs> but the jizz of it is that we really appreciate Red Letter Media's take on Star Trek, but it might not be the same one we have. Yeah. Yeah. I can watch it. And, and watch it objectively because I mean I get I get who they are like I get what they're doing I get I get it you know it's, I don't take it seriously yeah it's um, fun it's entertainment he continues also Mike would be a great guest if you two could swing that I know you don't know each other at all and the continue verse seems to keep their guests pretty close knit but seeing as how it's a topic that both groups are passionate about and that you're all funny, I think it could work. That will never happen, Sebastian. I love, I love, I would love that. <laughs> I would I also would love, love it. it. That would be amazing, but uh, it's two different worlds. I would, I mean, we we could just go to Wisconsin and, like, camp out and stalk them. That's true. We could just, like, use context clues from their videos to find out where their warehouse is. <laughs> And then just that's, uh, just knock on their door and be like, "Hey, you guys want to do a podcast?" That's probably normal. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> uh, lastly, I thought I'd try my hand at some peyote. Uh, sorry, nice. Freudian Freudian slip. Peyote. <laughs> Are you fucking the peyote? <laughs> uh, number one, Gorn and Morn. Oh my god. The Gorn that Kirk fought and Morn somehow end up marooned on a strange planet in a wacky odd couple sitcom. How old do Gorn get? Are they like I don't know. Wookiees? They live for like hundreds <laughs> of years. He would have to be like at least like a hundred and hundred and thirty years old. At, at least. At, at least, least. hundred. Yeah. So probably like older than that. Um do you pitch that or ditch that? Uh <laughs> So, okay, so does the... Somebody would have to talk, and it can't be Morn, right? The Gorn does talk, but he talks, like... Yeah, like, yeah, a like little a, bit. He doesn't talk yeah. very much. Yeah. The Gorn in uh, Star Trek Online do have lines. They talk, like... They, they talk a little bit like that, but it's kind of normal. It's a little normalized. Mm, it would have to be. <laughs> somebody would have to talk. If so, if the Gorn talks, I would watch that shit. I'd sure. pitch that shit. I'll pitch that. Uh, Any, number more, two... More? Number two is Gorn, Morn, and Dorn. <laughs> Michael Dorn catches wind of a new Star Trek show featuring old characters and demands to participate at the start of its third season. Oh, it's not Dorn from uh, no. Major League? <laughs> God damn it, Space Dorn. Nah, uh, it's Michael Dorn. <laughs> God damn it, Michael Dorn. God damn it, Michael Dorn. <laughs> I wanted to come up with a third serious one, but shitty puns is all I got. 
uh, Morn, Gorn, Dorn, and Corn, where they go to a corn festival. <laughs> it's Gorn, Morn, Dorn, and Corn with the band Corn. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Pitch that. <laughs> 100% pitch that. Uh, keep on trekking. Shameful non-patron, but hopefully soon. Lieutenant Commander aboard the USS Thunderchild, Sebastian Bustos. Cool name. I like your ship, man. That is a cool name. Also uh, become a patron. Yeah, thank you anyway, though. But definitely, uh, any, and just listening helps. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. But also become a patron. Sid money. <laughs> Sid money. <laughs> That's a family guy. Uh, our right. next, I think so. Said money. Our next email is from Haunter the Pokemon. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? <laughs> wait, wait. I know it's Halloween time, but <laughs> his his name is Haunter Sutton. Okay. Uh, Did I'm... you just add the Pokemon? <laughs> yeah, his name is uh, not Haunter. Oh, I thought somebody and was then in parentheses his... okay. the Pokemon. <laughs> Hey man, <laughs> I don't know. The title of this email is "Hey Trek Boys." Sorry, it's late here. I can't yell too loud. That's fine. Uh, I'm still a handful of episodes behind, so if the podcast has already been blanked, I'm sorry to bother you. What canceled? But uh, a specific term was used that oh. uh, contractually we're not allowed to say. Oh, oh, oh! I got you. I got you. Uh, I'm a girl, so I was wondering if you could do a gender-neutral version of the Trek Boys shirt. Just kidding. I don't have any fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, also, no. Uh, Trek Boys is gender-neutral. Trek Boys is gender-neutral. Gender what if we? What if we came up with like a uh, Trek like Goyles? A Trek Trek Goyles? That's funny. G O I L S Trek like Goyles. Goyles. Yeah. <laughs> That's, good. That's pretty funny. Trek and Boys. we just have long hair on it. Exactly. That's great. Trek Boys is gender else? neutral and it's why it has an eye. Boys. Yeah, boys. boys. Anyway, boys. pitch it or ditch it. After finding out about the Klingon dicks, some Discovery character goes out of their way to catalog the dicks of the Trek universe. Oh, interesting. It would become a gender-swapped allegory for the hashtag MeToo movement, and eventually a commentary on why the fuck this is even allowed to happen in the Trek universe at all. I know it's a bad idea, but they started it. <laughs> <laughs> There's that, that reminds me of that, like, I don't know, I, I think it was like an art installation where it was like vaginas, like... And it was just pictures of vaginas. Like, everyone does this, right? Like, they take a picture of a vagina and they, like, make a close-up of it or whatever. Yeah, everyone uh, does that. Everyone does it. Uh, myself <laughs> everyone in included. art school does it, yeah. Uh, there was I, a, there I, was a th fucking exhibition at my art school that was, like, uh, that was... It wasn't photos of vaginas. It was, like, paintings of vaginas. Yeah, like paintings. But it like, was, like, uh, super close-up paintings. I, yeah, I know somebody who took a picture of their butthole and, like, put that in a thing. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> it, it reminds me of pictures of buttholes. <laughs> Except it's two dicks. Why not? Um, ditch it, because I didn't want them to ever talk about the Klingon dicks, even. But I mean, I'm going to ditch the Klingon dicks, but I will definitely pitch looking at the Klingon dicks. If you know what I mean. I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to pitch a <laughs> tent, which is an old term for getting a butt. I'm wondering what, like... If there's actual, like, drawn pornography out there of, Absolutely. like, Klingons with two dicks now. I mean, there's all kinds of everything. <laughs> if there's not, get on it, M-Class fans. Let me Google it right now. Sure. Google that. Hold on, I made the window too big. I don't want to see the dicks that big. Yes, you do. Uh, uh Kling Klingon two dicks art. <laughs> Thank you for writing in, Haunter, the Pokemon. We appreciate it. That was a very funny email. Thank you, Haunter. I'm sure that's your real name. So far, I don't see any two dicks. That sucks. Two, two dicks rule 34. Oh, no. <laughs> You're not going to get Klingons. No. Uh, there's a comment. Uh, there's like, it's like safe search on here? Like, what is yeah, this? What are you doing? I don't know. Our next email <laughs> is from Mr. Calbert Burton Warbly Scotch. <laughs> That's 
Holy shit. Who says, Good morrow and healthy tidings to you and yours, gentlemen oh of Trek. God. What is this, like a Christmas email? Is this a Dick Dickensian this email? This is a Dickensian email. I, fucking, I fucking sit down Charles. and deal with it. I hate Charles Dickens. Get your Dick two Dickensians out of here. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mr. Calbert Burton Wobbly Scotch. <laughs> Perhaps you've heard of me. What the hell is happening? <laughs> Worry not if it is not the case, my friends, for I will tarry not. Mine is a tale which will shock, illuminate, and perhaps even terrify you. Oh my god, is this like an old timey crypt keeper? Oh god, it's so long. Um, <laughs> you gotta keep the voice up, dude. Yeah. Many moons hence, I was the owner and proprietor of Burton <laughs> Warbly Scotch and Pliskin's Good Time Feel Good Leather Boot Factory in the <laughs> bustling English village of Little Piddling. That's a real place. It is with great shame, I must admit to you, sirs, that we employed many a child to work our leather stampers. <laughs> It was legal then, so... Though our business practices were dangerous, our profits were monumental. <laughs> I thought myself king of the universe, till the universe itself dealt me a massive blow. <laughs> While on my morning constitutional, a clatter and a clash, bright lights filled my vision, and I was transported across time and space. Oh my god. <laughs> when I regained my faculties, I found myself a stranger, lost in a time which was not of my own. Oh, jeez. I gathered myself and quested to ask the nearest person I could find as to what had transpired, whose very features brought within me feelings of revulsion and fear. <laughs> like the very vision of the devil himself he was. Oh, my God. I bravely confronted him and said, Tell me, creature, what manner of world is this? <laughs> to, me, to my shock, he informed me we were cruising through space. <laughs> For the next several weeks, I spent time amongst these strange monsters who called themselves Vulcan. <laughs> they grew to trust me, and I them. Oh my god. And yes, dear friends, I came to love one. Oh, shit. Our journey together came to an end when they deposited me back on Terra Firma at we the Academy of Starfleet. About, we were just talking about that. Which is where I now find myself in these hallowed halls of learning. Perhaps in the future, I will have together came to an end when they transported me by... Uh, oh, shit. I messed up. Perhaps in the future, <laughs> I will have the honor to call myself a member of this esteemed community and will sail the stars once more. I must take my leave for now, my dearest friends. A new companion of mine has <laughs> replicated me a penny farthing to bring back memories of a life once lived. Yours in perpetuity, Mr. Calbert Burton Warbly Scotch. Oh my god. Uh, dear Mr. Calbert Burton Calbert Warbly Scotch. Burton Warbly Scotch. Of the M Class Discord, this character fucking sucks. <laughs> I, it's like, I think I, uh, I think he's going for like the uh, Mark Twain, right? Yeah, like he's Mark Twain in it, right? Yeah. All right. I, don't I don't send an email in from this character anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Calvert Burton Warbly Scotch. I am impressed with the old English twang, though. Thank you. The old. Uh, I like. I like. I like that. Um, I think the most impressive part of this email is it's from Burton Warbly Scotch at gmail.com. They <laughs> <laughs> made a Gmail for us. Jesus Christ. They didn't want to go Calvert. They didn't want to put the Calvert no, in that there. That would have been too long. Calvert, it's uh, Warbly Scotch 83. 1983. He or 1883. He calls himself uh, Calvert in the email, but in the title of the email, he calls himself Calvin. I don't know, maybe he's got two... <laughs> maybe he doesn't know how to use email because he's from the 1800s. Maybe, it's like a type machine. Who knows, even, how it works. Our next email <laughs> that I don't have to do an accent for... Thank God, right? ...is from Asterios. Hi. Who says, Dear Sexy Sexy Trek Boy Toys. Nice. I'm just a boy toy. <laughs> Your ongoing discussion of Discovery's premise, or lack thereof, is super smart and interesting to me. Thank you! Oh thank, my god. Thank you. I, I hope you. that's not sarcastic. Yeah. I think I, I figured think out what was. we were... I think I figured out what they were going for. The central premise of the season was, can Federation ideals survive in a time of war? Sure. That's the central I'll, premise I'll of Deep Space Nine. Right. Um... Uh, 
But I'll I, agree with that. I can agree with that. I, they didn't do it well, but no, that is the central it premise. Lost. It gets lost in all the Kurtzman bullshit. Yeah. Think about it. In the pilot, which was fucking terrible, Burnham wants to fire first and cripple the Klingon ship. Giorgio says Starfleet doesn't fire first. And that right. mistake leads to the Klingon war or something. Oh, whatever. Just go with it. <laughs> also, Mirror Universe happens now. There's evil. Everyone from there is evil, and they're bringing oh. the evil here. Okay, I guess so. <laughs> In the Mirror Universe, they try their best not to murder everyone, including the planet hiding the Terran Rebellion, while still keeping their cover intact. Federation ideals mm. versus personal survival. And finally, in the finale, Admiral Cornwall... Cornwell? Admiral Cornwell and the Federation Council are super yeah. okay with totally genociding the Klingon homeworld, but Burnham yeah. refuses and finds an idealist, idealistic solution that ends the war, giving control of a planet, destroying bomb to a lady who sexually assaulted her ex-boyfriend. That's true. That does happen. That, that actually happens in the show. <laughs> anyway. But, I th not, but not really, though, because he's also a Klingon. So. True. But she he's did sexually he's assault him. But I thought that, I thought that he loved her. I thought that uh, well, he he like, I don't know if he ever loved her, but like he doesn't have his Klingon memories, so he doesn't. It's she was just uh, like, let's fuck, and he was like, no. I and guess she did I it guess anyway. That's wrong. Yeah, I guess that that's sexual assault. Uh, anyway, I think that's what they were going for. Also, the biggest discovery was the friends they made along the way. <laughs> I think the real discovery was that this show sucks two dicks. I'm gonna second that one, Asterios. That's a that's a, no, that's a good email. Yeah. Thank you. That's I I, I I think you're right. I think that they were or some somebody in that writer's room who they all fired by the way, uh <laughs> uh wanted that to be they were kinda pushing for that. But in that show there's no room for yeah. that. Yeah. And like I wouldn't say that we were saying the show didn't have a premise at all. I was we were just saying that whatever premise it did have, it completely butchered. It missed. And never it's a delivered miss on. Yeah, it's a miss, dude. Uh, I think you're right, though. I think that was definitely what yeah. they were going for. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Uh, hugs and kisses, Lieutenant Junior Grade in a blue uniform, Asterios. Hello, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Asterios. <laughs> uh, our next email is from a friend of mine named what? Max. Hello, hello, Jeff, Josh, Kevin? Everyone thinks Kevin is here. Or, or less interesting member of the Continue Show. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, That's fucking funny. Big fan of Rom screaming here. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, Rom always reminds me of that, like... Uh, buzzard from the Bugs Bunny cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Well, he starts out like totally different. He's real mean, right? Like he's real typical Ferengi, which yeah. is like, racist. But but then he gets like lovably stupid. Uh, nope. Oh, I, 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 my voice is like gone. I'm I've just, been on like seven podcasts today. <laughs> I'm just I'm doing the buzzard. I'm not even doing wrong. Oh, uh, brother. <laughs> How about that Star Trek? How about it? I've been having a good old time listening to you guys talk about all the wonderful Trek things I love. Trek things I have yet to love, and Trek things I will never love. Thank you! Thank you! Your cool guy voices make the time zoom by while I'm doing work for the man. And while I'm being herded around like cattle by the lovely New York City PP Smell Transit Authority. PP Smell Transit Authority. That's true. <laughs> Your city does smell like pee. I love that you guys touch on some real hot and sweaty topics like our lovely crumbling society. Fuck boomers. Thank you. You're all genuinely funny, and I have plenty of yucks along the way, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I want to tell a quick story, since this is going to be the longest emails episode ever. Yeah, we're at like five, and there's like 50 more. <laughs> it's fine. Um, the, uh, the last time I was on the subway in New York City, there was... Yeah. You know how the seats in the subway are like bucketed for butts? Yeah. Uh, there was a puddle of human piss. 
Yeah. In the seat. And it was almost at the top. Like, it was, like, the almost overfilled like overflowing, cup. overflowing. And yeah. every time the train would lurch, everybody oh. would, like, look over at it, like, waiting for it to bust Oh, out. man. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. It that's was the most New York tense shit, fucking ride I've ever been in in my life. <laughs> that's fucking, that's super New York City. Um, anyway, he continues, I've been work slowly working my way through Deep Space Nine, and I gotta say, this show has a great ass, and I've got my head all the way up it. <laughs> It's like the it's like the the cave, right? The, the what's the Socrates? Is it Socrates? Yeah, Plato? The, I think it's Plato. The cave. Plato. Yeah. The, it's like how do you even know you're in a cave? <laughs> how do you know how great the ass looks if your head's up it? I appreciate all the heavy real world subjects the show reflects on, like unethical treatment of Ferengi women and shitty fuck religion being pushed into our fucking schools. Great Thank stuff. Thank you. I was so used to the TNG crew that the DS9 cast took a bit of getting used to, but I'm pretty sure I love them. Yeah, by the end, man, you're gonna be sad. Like, I, every time I watch the show, I'm sad at the end. Because they, they go away. Yeah. I don't get to see my friends anymore. They're my only friends. They're my family at this point. Yeah. They're, like, better than my family. They're definitely better than my family, too. <laughs> They're better than, like, everyone's family. Maybe I'll get around to watching Voyager and Enterprise? Question mark, question mark, question mark? Uh, Enterprise, yes. Yeah, don't worry about Voyager. <laughs> Voyager, whatever. <laughs> I definitely I mean, plan watch it to do it, but you know. <laughs> I definitely plan on watching TOS just to see why Jeff loves it so much. So look forward to another jerk to talk to about that, buddy. There you go. I'm always looking forward to more jerks to talk to. Joinks. Joinks. Goyles. You little joink. Uh um, Trek Goyles. <laughs> Hello, my baby. Hello, my Trek Goyle. Hello, my truck time gal. So then, let's pitch it or ditch some shit. Shit. We open on Quark's bar. Pitch it's it. a lot more busy than it usually is. We find out that Quark has a new Holosuite program that allows the user to engage sexually with the wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you ever see some of those bad dragon fleshlights? Oh man? my it's pretty much god. Uh, this has become a huge hit, and people are coming to the station from all over to get their freak on with that hot piece of space. <laughs> this, yeah. this of course, causes problems with the Bajoran religious leaders. Quark yeah. is asked to shut it down, but he refuses because he hasn't been this profitable in years. He also makes a good point that the attraction is great for the station because it's bringing in new visitors. <laughs> <laughs> new horny visitors. B-plot. Odo has to keep an eye on the new activities in the bar because of the shit Bajoran orb thumpers did in the past to the <laughs> school. He notices Dr. Bashir leaving one of the hollow suites. It turns out that not only has Bashir gone and enjoyed the new program, but he is the most frequent customer. How <laughs> is he hiding it from them? <laughs> it gets he's like to... putting a mustache on every time he goes in. <laughs> it gets to a point where it's interfering with his work, and Cisco orders him to attend a hollow addiction seminar at the closest starbase. I feel like this is... I'm having a deja vu right now. I feel like we've been here before. Uh, this maybe I've just maybe I've just fantasized about fucking a wormhole. Maybe uh, this episode comes to a conclusion when Quark catches a Bajoran religious leader with their pants down in one of the hollow suites. They nice. agree to leave Quark alone as long as he never mentions the incident. Julian <laughs> returns to the station. He is walked to his quarters by Cisco and assures him that his hollow suite activities will no longer interfere with his job. <laughs> he makes a point that he will never use the sexy wormhole program ever again. Cisco leaves, the door closes, and Julian immediately asks the computer to replicate a flashlight. Wide shot I, of the station, executive producer Rick Berman, Finn. <laughs> I have one change. I have one writer's Sure, note. punch it up. Instead of Julian, it's Barkley. <laughs> Barkley's just on the station. He's visiting. He's just there, right? He's visiting. Everyone visits the station. It's true. Smash, fucking Dude, how whatever. about it's still Bashir? But okay. he goes to get Hollow Addiction Seminar at a, at a Starbase, and Barkley's yeah. the one who's running it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. The two of them together would be amazing. That really would be great. That would be um, really great. The moral of the story is that sometimes it's okay to fuck a wormhole. Uh, yeah, I would say, like, any time is fine to do that, like, because well, it's a wormhole. Like, I'm going to pitch care. that. That's fucking great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. I'm not going to shame anybody. I'm not going to kink shame you if you want to stick your penis in a holographic wormhole. Yeah. If you can get big enough, you could put it in a real wormhole. I'm fine with that. <laughs> if you get, like, fucking, like, I don't know, like, 
Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy Titan size or whatever. Yeah. Thanks again, boyos. I hope y'all have a great week. Maybe I'll write again someday. The universe will never know. (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) Keep on trekking in the free world. Chief Petty Officer Max Hollis of the USS (laughs) Pinochle. The USS Pinochle. P.S. Listen to Rider Club Radio, your one-stop shop for everything Common Rider. We're on iTunes. I pay for that shit. Rate us five stars. (laughs) And I want you to know that that is in gigantic, bold, black letters. Oh, I can tell. (laughs) I can tell. Uh, Max is a co-host of Rider Club Radio, which is my other podcast. Definitely go listen to it. Yeah. If you know what Common Rider is, you will like the podcast. <laughs> if you don't, eh. I definitely have seen that show. show. It's a show, right? Yeah. It's a show. <laughs> I know that. I know when they f- dig up Hitler's jewels. <laughs> Right? Don't they dig up Hitler's gold? There's the the thing where, like, the villains shocker in the original series are, like, they used to be Nazis before the Nazis, like, lost. They're into, like, human experimentation and shit. Just like the Nazis. And, uh, they go searching for Hitler's secret treasure, which is, like, the fucking, um, what's it called? The staff that, like, pierced the side of Jesus that's supposed to... The Spear of Destiny. It's supposed to be, like, magical or whatever, and they go searching for it, and they find the crypt that has it Whoever holds it it is immortal. That's the thing. And, like, they open it up, and Kamen Rider has already taken it and replaced it, and, like, (laughs) they open it up, and they're like, Kamen Rider! (laughs) That's amazing. And then he beats the shit out of them. (laughs) With the Spear of Destiny. Um, Our next email (laughs) is uh, from Ares. The god? Yeah. I was born under your sign. It's, I'm a it's Aries. spelled like your sign too, not like the god Aries. Yeah, um, I know you guys have been on a podcast called Continue. I have not. Fuck I, you. I helped invent it. <laughs> <laughs> but have you checked out Star Trek Continues? I heard what? on another podcast that Vic Mignogna swiped a sandwich. Mm-hmm. He's a good Kirk, though. <laughs> You don't have to read this, but my username is Aries0083, like the Gundam series. Nice. I read it anyway. Uh, Gundam0083 is really good. So I don't think I've seen that Gundam. It's good. It's like about the soldiers in the war. It's not like right, about like the special yeah. guy who yeah, pilots the like, God Gundam or whatever. I do know that one because I I remember reading about because there's like eighty five Gundam. Yeah, right? there's a million. It's like a super yeah. ongoing series. Yeah. Um, have you ever watched Star Trek Continues? I have not. It's not bad, actually. That's like, what people say. It's a lot hammier than the original yeah. series because people, they're trying to yeah. play up the hamminess. Right. But I think some of the voice actors in STO are from that. Yeah, I know there's a girl. They bring on a new character who is like a counselor, like a Troy type character. Yeah. And she does voices in STO. I know that. Yes, she. I forget her name. I could picture her face. I don't remember her name. Yeah. But um, she does a bunch of voices. They do. Uh, they do like some follow-ups where they get actors from the original series to come back. Mm-hmm. Like they got um, Apollo's actor from the original series, like the guy who played the god Apollo. Yeah, he comes back and like he's like de- he's playing decrepit Apollo <laughs> because he gave up his powers or whatever. But he's just That's an old funny. man now. He's just old. Yeah. But it's actually a pretty good episode. Like Star Trek continues is like. Uh, what's it on? It's on YouTube. Oh, it's just... Okay, yeah. Yeah. I thought it might be on Amazon or something. I don't know. It might be, but um, it's on YouTube. And I would say, like, Star Trek Continues is, like, a solid, like, B- minus C+, plus TOS That's episode. That's not bad. Yeah, they go from being, like... They have some D episodes, for sure, but they def. I'd say they even get up to, like, solid B episodes sometimes. Wow. That's high praise, knowing yeah. uh, how we think. <laughs> how we think as a single person. We are one. Um, so Resistance we, is futile. I don't know. I'm <laughs> if you try ju- hard enough, maybe you'll get away. <laughs> That's the M-Class motto. <laughs> I'm kind of tired, so whatever. Vic Mignogna. Mignogna? I don't know how to say his name. Min- Mignogna? Uh, I'd say Mignogna. He's a... Uh, I'm jealous of him in a way because he just like decided at some point he was going to make Star Trek. He was like, fuck, they're not yeah. doing TOS anymore. I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's, and it's, he just did it. Yeah. 
and that's amazing. Like, if I could it, get a bunch of my friends together and recreate the TOS set and just make Star Trek episodes, I'd be all yeah. the fuck about it. It reminds me of, like, the the early days of YouTube where, uh, uh, what's his name? He does, like, visual effects for L ILM now because he was, he made, uh, like, lightsaber videos where he fought his oh, yeah. Ryan, Ryan versus Dorkman yeah, series. Yeah, I remember that shit. And, uh, the guys who did, like, Three in the Morning, which is, like, a lightsaber, like, fan film. It reminds me of that shit when, like, uh, the internet was fun and good. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> the weird thing about Star Trek Continues is it looks 100% like TOS. Like, they, they went yeah. the extra fucking mile to the point where, like, the lighting operators on the show and everything studied the way they lit TOS down to, like, spotlights yeah. in the background and shit. Yeah, there's some real... I mean, like, that's a classical Hollywood fucking lighting, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's, like, everything's lit, like... Like, that's what you're sitting around all day waiting for the lighting guys to, like, light yeah. the scene. <laughs> and it's, it's super impressive. The show's pretty good. I, I recommend it for people who like TOS. Mm -hmm. So I, I recommend it for you to watch it as well, Josh. I will watch it. I recommend for us to just make Star Trek shows okay. as well. <laughs> all right. Um, our next email is from Phantom Thief Goofus. That old Goofus. <laughs> is Goofus Boys. Goofus Boys. He says, my Dark Lord Trek Boys. Oh my god, it's the evil somebody. <laughs> I hope this triple sacrifice is sufficient. Oh god. We a devil podcast now, boys. <laughs> Hail Satan. <laughs> also sorry for ruining legit Pitch It or Ditch It with my dumb goofs. Between this and my D&D &D game, I generate more stupid than I can get rid of. <laughs> That's okay. My whole life is that. So. Yeah, dude. Like, I'm all about jokey pitch it or ditch it's and real pitch it or ditch it's. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm cool with I either. I don't care. Keeping... As long as you guys keep writing, I'm fine. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Just write in as much as you want with whatever yeah, you want. Do whatever, man. Uh, keeping with the themes of Satan and hell, I have some <laughs> damned questions for you. <laughs> Damn. One... Nice. What would you sell your soul for? Uh, right now? Uh, like a box of Oreos. <laughs> Damn, that's cheap. Uh, what would I sell? Like, it, like, first of all, like, I think the concept of a soul is, like, silly. Uh... <laughs> Well, let's like, let's put some hard ground rules. On okay, this shit. so like we have the a soul, soul right? exists, and sure. if you sell your soul to Satan, you go to hell. Okay. Um, what would I sell my soul for? There's some like very private things <laughs> that I wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe those. Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, a Klondike nothing. bar. <laughs> What would you do for a what would you do for a, for Klondike, a Klondike, bar? Klondike bar? Sell your soul. Uh, I, I don't really care that much about money or anything. Obviously, uh, I mean you should be a Patreon though, a patron. Yeah, uh, become a patron. We don't care about money. Yeah. Uh, but I don't do know. It. World peace. <laughs> Is that lame? I don't know. No, that's cool. I would sell my soul for Star Trek to be real life. I would do that. Oh, yeah. I would definitely do that. I'll that would that benefit world. everyone. Yeah, it's just save the world. You're welcome. Um, so a Klondike bar. Question two. What is your personal version of hell? Uh, real life. <laughs> uh, what's happening right now in America? Uh, that's about it. <laughs> Is that it's, too real? It's got too real on this podcast. Should I make a joke? Okay, let me think of a funny one. Uh, what's happening right now in America? Oh! <laughs> My personal version of hell. That's a that's a very personal question, Phantom Thief Goofus. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Having my, I talked about this earlier to Josh. Having my hand injured in some way that makes it so I can't ever make art again. That is yeah, my personal version suck. of hell. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that you're listening, suck. Satan. Come get me. Fucking bring it on, you red bitch. How do we even know he's red? Why would he be red? Because uh, hell's hot and he gets sunburned. 
Is that it's just a really bad sunburn? Yeah. Like a tanning bed situation. <laughs> it's a full on Trump situation. Oh, he's just like fake tan? Yeah. I knew a girl who had red hair in high school who fake tanned. Ooh, and that's as not a, a good look. As a redhead, I was like, uh, I didn't. I never said anything to her. I was. I. I. She was very nice, and she's the first girl I ever kissed. By the way, in seventh Aww. grade. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but I was always like, yeah, you're a redhead. Like you can't. Like we don't get tan. Like we just don't. So. So everyone knows it's fake. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Uh, Goofus continues, for me, I would sell my soul for something that benefits all of mankind, like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk getting into a donate all of your money and then kill each other with samurai swords accident. <laughs> kill each other with samurai <laughs> swords? That would be interesting. It's an accident, too. So. <laughs> that work? And hell for me is dinner with my family where I can't decide what to order and the food never comes and I'm the center of attention. Oh, man, that's some deep anxiety right there. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't... That's not a fear I have. I don't care. People can wait on my ass. I don't give a shit. Wait for me. I'm the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Except on this podcast, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, agree, I'll agree to that. I'll oh, agree don't agree, agree with that. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I don't know if that would be like a hell I would be in anyway. I think Josh's uh, personal hell... Is his everyday life. I can't... <laughs> I can't, like, think of one for you, man. What, me? Yeah, what's your personal hell, buddy? I don't... I don't... I don't get too hung up about, like, a lot... Oh, well, I mean, there's, like, obvious ones. Like, that people who know me, like, needles. Like, getting stuck with needles would be horrible. You I would just them. live in needle world? Yeah, like, just, like... Ugh, like, hypodermic needles. Fucking fuck that shit. Jesus. Needles That's don't it. bother me that much. I pass out every time I get shots. So. Damn. And then the doctors and nurses laugh at me. It's it's fucking great. You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> well, you know, I'm a big wiener because I don't like needles and hoo 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 hoo. You know, there used to be a period of time, like when I was younger. I don't know, maybe it was because I was a kid or something. Where like, yeah. if you had, if you told someone you had a phobia, they didn't immediately start trying to talk you out of your phobia. Yeah, now that now people try to let logic you out of your phobia, like flying, like they were like, well, you know, uh, so many people fly a day. Yeah, it's like it's a I phobia. understand the math. Phobia means you. irrational fear. It's it's a it's something with my like lizard hind brain that I don't like. I can't explain it to you. See, it's millions of years of evolution, and I'm afraid of something. That's what it yeah. is. It's like fucking. <laughs> Whenever I tell somebody, like, I'm arachnophobic, that I hate spiders, they're always like, yeah. but some spiders are cute! And I'm like, I don't give a fuck! That's also not a fact, that's an opinion. I don't give a fuck. Well, spiders are beneficial, it, they right. kill all the mosquitoes, it will fucking Great. let the mosquitoes eat my shit. I don't care. Great. Give me fucking malaria. Um, he finishes out the email by saying, trek on the trek, you treks. <laughs> Captain nice. and founder of Cool Crimes Inc. Ah, uh, yes. He he very specifically corrected me because uh -huh. I've been saying incorporated. Oh, it's Inc. It's Inc. Pronounced like the stuff in pens because that is very important to Phantom Thief Goofus. Okay, well, I'm not gonna say it isn't. So I'm gonna say it isn't, bitch. Cool Crimes Incorporated. <laughs> wow. Nah. There goes Phantom Thief Goofus's support. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he is a phantom and a thief. I'm sure he can understand a joke. I'm a doofus for that goofus. Oh, shit. New shirt coming. <laughs> Put it on a shirt. <laughs> Sell it. How m I just wonder how many M-Class fans would wear a shirt that says, I'm a doofus for that goofus. So I, I tend to follow the rule of, like, the stupider the thing, the funnier it is. I do, too. And that's a pretty stupid idea for a shirt. I, so I love you, Phantom Thief Goofus. I appreciate all your emails. Me, too. <laughs> um, our next email is very long. <laughs> Oh, I, I, so I'm learning, I'm learning what that means. Like, when you say that, now I know exactly the type of email this is going to be. Um, it's not a character. Okay, okay. It's, it's Rich. Plain and simple Taylor Rich. Okay. 
who says, Yo, Trekkie Bees. Trekkie Bees, baby. Go, he's he's going to jump into some straight pitch it or ditch it's in honor of his good old buddy, Boston Sean. Okay. Uh, these ones are going to be serious ones in an alternate universe trying to extend the Star Trek I love kind of way. I'm only going to read one of these POTs, Rich. Okay. Since I read one. two of your emails last time. Yeah, pick your favorite one. Uh, I didn't read either of them, so I'm just going to read the first one. Just lie and say that was your favorite. That was my favorite. Yeah, you won. Picard, Troy, Riker, Jordy, and some important admiral are negotiating... Negotiating... Are you drunk again? Oh, no. Never, Josh. Oh, no. <laughs> are negotiating a ceasefire between two warring races, leaving Data in command. Okay. There is a bombing as the team are beaming back up to the Enterprise, and the explosion knocks out the entire transporter system, trapping the team in the pattern buffers and causing a dramatic power drain on the ship. Oh, Jesus. The patterns will be lost one by one if they don't get to a starbase or another ship to transfer the patterns and save them. Is it speed? Is it speed? Oh, God, please tell me this is speed. Hold on, Josh. <laughs> but there is a ticking clock of the power failure slowly downing the ship. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Data orders the shutting down of systems off one by one. Environmentals in certain parts of the ships, weapons, shields, everything he can do in order to keep everyone alive. They finally find another ship a few hours warp away, but it will mean losing one of the people in the buffer, and Data oh. has to decide who dies. This is good. This is good. Even though the decision should be rudimentary to him, Geordi is the least important to the peace efforts. Data lets the Admiral die, and then has to struggle with the decision. When Picard later asks why he chose the Admiral, he says he doesn't know. That's great. Dude, it's super pitched that. That's great. Super that should go on the that. wall of best POTs. Yes, forever. That's great. And as a matter of fact, you have gained me reading your second POT from that. No, don't, because it can't be better than that one. I gotta read it, Josh. <laughs> there is an advertising break in the middle here. Are your clothes covered in Ractageno stains, silver fluid that will copy your molecular structure, or the blood of your fellow Batleth tournament competitors? Yes. Supporting M-Class via Patreon gets rid of even the toughest stains and makes your clothes smell like fresh flowers from the Justice Planet. For God's sakes, don't step on them! <laughs> Available now for the low, low price of $1. That's patreon.com slash M-Class podcast. Amazing. I didn't think you have to write that commercial. No, it just came on the TV. That's, that's cool. POD 2. A series of small malfunctions has beset the Enterprise-D on a routine mission to transport a science team to the Argus Array, mm -hmm. coinciding with a number of the crew getting what seems like the common cold. Before the Enterprise warps to its next mission, Geordi notices a fluctuation in the warp core at the same time that Ensign Rowe notices the con is not responding to her inputs. What? The ship warps at warp 9 for 6 hours, despite the crew's attempts to stop it. Then See stops. you later. <laughs> then stops and fully powers down with only emergency systems unaffected. After investigation, they find that a small, non-essential part of the ship, a nearly dead Borg drone from the best of both worlds... What? ...has been spending months trying to reactivate, finally deciding to disassemble himself into his own collective of microscopic nano-Borg, and has been assimilating systems and crew gradually... Jordy has to convert the warp core into a giant electromagnet to EMP blast the whole ship. But in order to do that, Data has to fire himself out of a torpedo tube just in time. <laughs> it's very Spock. It's a movie. It's like a movie plot. That's pretty good. I pitched that too. You were yeah, right. I it wasn't as good too. as the first one. No, but, but it's it still, still good. Fit. That's still fit. Nothing was going to be that. I'm telling you. That was great. That was like, that would be one of my favorite episodes of Star That's, Trek. That was a great, that was great. <laughs> Uh, right, I'm off to snort some Ketracel White and pledge my allegiance to some Play-Doh. So see ya! <laughs> Uniform tailor of the USS Tapons radio program and proud patron, Rich. Thank you. Rich, you're too good. Great, great email. Yeah, too good, Rich. <laughs> Our next email is from Ebba. Hi, Ebba. Who, I looked up how to pronounce your name, so I hope it's right. Okay. Hello, Josh and Jeff. My name's Ebba, and then a last name. Here to okay. represent my home country of Sweden in your growing global fan base. Hi, Sweden! Sweden! Skull. That's crazy! 
I'm a very new listener to your podcast and podcasts in general. Nice. I came across yours from a picture of the Satan's Collection watch list that was posted on a Discord channel I'm a part of. That makes me feel really good. <laughs> That's amazing. Because, like, somebody saw some dumb piece of M-Class art I made and was like, I gotta <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> I gotta see what this is about. <laughs> I thought to myself, huh, there's a devil in Deep Space Nine and had to look up the episode. Seeing it was the Rumpelstiltskin episode made me laugh a lot, and I found myself <laughs> laughing even more listening to the most recent episode at the time, City on the Edge of Forever. Yeah. I'd never heard of any of you before this. Sorry, but now I okay. see Josh and Paul have many years of content on YouTube. You've given mm -hmm. this poor girl a lot to get through. Plus, I might also find myself rewatching all of Star Trek? There's only so many hours in a day. Thank well, you. there's less hours in Sweden because it's dark all the time, so... Oh, no. Well, soon it is. I mean, it's sunny all the time in the summertime. Thank you for all the fun, funny content you make, and I hope there's many more episodes to come. Love, Eva. Thank you, Eva. That's amazing. That Thank you. A, that was such an awesome email. Thank you I so also, much. I would love to visit Sweden someday. It seems like a pretty uh, chill place, and I don't mean cold. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> Eva just turned off the podcast. Eva's forever. like, I thought this was a funny show, but I see that it's not. So I see, I see with my ear holes. That it's not. <laughs> my ear holes. <laughs> um, our next email is from Steve. Hi, Steve. Who says, hey, Turekbo. It's Turekbo. The magic of Megas 2. What a great episode. The image, yeah. the editing seemed a bit rushed, but I think that's the case with most of the cartoon episodes. Mm -hmm. One thing that stands out is, in the cartoon, Spock seems more likely to make leaps of faith, a.k.a. guesses, in his conclusions than he did in the original series. Was yeah. that just poor writing, or was it supposed to be a natural progression of the character continuing to grow emotionally? I don't think it was the second thing. <laughs> The thing is, TAS won some writing awards, but not for this episode. <laughs> well, compared to other animated series from 1973, like, that show is incredibly well, well written. Yeah. Like, there's lots of dialogue, there's lots of plot, like, it's not always, like, good, but, like... I mean, go watch, like, Scooby-Doo, man. Like It's true. It, and every episode sucks. of Scooby-Doo is the same exact story. It, yeah, it's bullshit. Like, that show sucks. It does. I mean, I liked Scooby-Doo when I was a kid, and I still yeah. think the characters are fun, but the yeah, show Scooby -Doo itself sucks great. a dick. But the, car but the old animated series is, like, stupid. Um, um, also, Spock chugs a beer at the end, which is kind of badass. Yeah. He's, it's, I mean... It's the spirit of the situation, right? If he's, like, Legolas, he could drink, like, 60 of those. <laughs> it's true. Uh, what do you guys think of the music and sound effects? Very classic 70s stuff. Sounds like Space Ghost. It does. It I reminds think I brought me up of... Space Ghost in the episode. Yeah, you did. Yeah. It reminds me of my favorite movie and Jeff's favorite movie, Planet of the Dinosaurs. Yeah, it's my favorite movie. I think it's on YouTube. Go look up Planet of the Dinosaurs. Don't ever do that. We're going to watch it for that other thing we're going to do. we got to do the other thing at some fucking point. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, Josh could cosplay as Luscious Lucian. Oh, yeah. Hashtag just, devil peen. Just let me work out for like six months. you got to work also, out for like 60 years to get that also, body. Let me shrink my arms down. <laughs> so they're weirdly disproportionate. Uh, keep firing on all thrusters, guys. Steve. Thank you, Steve. Great email. Thank you, Steve. Our, our next to last email mm -hmm. is from Yana Demidenko. Nice name. Who says, Dear jo Jeff and Josh, my name is Yana. I am with Ning.com. It was great to find podcast. <laughs> I can't imagine how much time and effort does it take to make not only qualitative but interesting <laughs> content. It is so nice that you are doing best to provide only the best content to your audience. I decided to check if Ning.com can be beneficial to what you do. Let me <laughs> briefly describe what you use case we've experienced with content creators. It's served for launching own digital community to share your content with most loyal audience. 
<laughs> with our built-in monetization tool to set up different ways of raising funds for your projects like paid membership and paid I access. was going to ask if this was a joke, and now I know it's not. It is easier to find out which content be most interesting for your audience to create next. I know it's not because nobody is this funny. If no one has ever been this funny. <laughs> if you find it worth to discuss, please let me know. Thank oh you, God. Yana Demidenko, business manager, Ning.com. Thank you, Yana. That was a great email. It was a great email, Yana. It was my, I, like, I read that earlier today and just fucking busted out laughing, so I was like, I gotta read that on the air. <laughs> That's fucking great. We made it. A Russian robot sent us an email. <laughs> it's not the first one we've gotten either, actually. Uh, did Yana send us some more no, emails? No, we got it from I would other pitch Russian it. names. Pitch it, Yana. We'll talk later, Ning.com. We'll talk. <laughs> I'll send you my social security number later. <laughs> Our next email is from Jack Carpenter. Jack. Love Jack. He says, hey, y'all, big fan of Oasis here. No, seriously, I'm a big fan of Oasis. How dare you insult them in your latest Jeff and Josh shoot the shit? Oh, that's right. I did say I hate them. Yeah, I said Oasis sucks like 90 times. I do not like Oasis. Uh, now it's 91. Oasis uh, fucking sucks. <laughs> I Like the shitty Beatles. They're just the shitty Beatles. They're like, they're not even the shitty Beatles. They're like the god-awful Beatles, if you're going to compare them to the Beatles. I mean, of all the 90s bands that are like forever, like indelibly in my brain like oasis is like 250th yeah i just i i don't like I don't oasis like, i'm I sorry i'm like sorry em. jack like we sorry. can still be friends yeah i love you but i hate though i hate the oasis anyway happy spooktober happy october fest happy my birthday month are you a scorpio no i'm a libra Oh, uh, yeah, I get along with Libras, okay. <laughs> you believe in all that hibbity jibbity? No, it's, it's just fun. It's kind of a <laughs> it fun thing. It is just thing. fun. Um, speaking of spookiness, what's but the scary... But seriously, scare Pisces are crazy. <laughs> Damn. Hopefully no Pisces listen to this, baby. What's your wife? Uh, she is a Taurus. Yeah, Tauruses are cool. I get along uh, well with other, uh, like, Sagittarius... That's sag, the one. Being a sag. I've dated two Sagittariuses in a row. And I've, <laughs> I I find that, like, that's, like, the th it's, like, a thing. I don't know. Maybe it's a coincidence. It definitely is, but... That just reminds me of this video series I used to watch. Like, have you ever seen Marty Chang, the video yeah. series? Yeah. Did you ever see his horoscopes? No. He's He goes through all these, like, ridiculous horoscopes, and he gets to Sagittarius, and he's like, Sagittarius, you're funny, enlightening, and beautiful. Everyone around you benefits from your presence. If I wasn't a Sag, I'd fucking kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, anyway, what's the, uh, speaking of spookiness, what's the scariest thing to you about the Star Trek future? You often discuss the good stuff, but I was recently thinking about how terrifying the Borg are, for example. Yeah, that would be crippling. Yeah. That would be horrifying. Or how a transporter accident could trap me in limbo like that one episode. Or it could fuse you to the guy you're transporting with and you die a horrible, shuddering mass of Well, flesh. here's the thing. It's just like flying on an airplane. It never happens. It only happened that once. It only happened in the beginning of the first movie because they had to show scary stuff. Yeah, it only happened that once, and I'm sure that is really comforting to the, those two men's wife and kids. Yeah. Curious if you boys have any of your own terrifying Trek things that you think about during the day instead of doing actual work. Thanks as always, bros. Your favorite dumb jock, Commander Jack Carpenter, USS Virginia. I love you, Commander. Jack, uh, Jack, you're not a dumb jock. You're a smart jock. You're my... I would wear you, jock. Whoa. <laughs> and that's it. That's all I would be wearing. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> the, the, Bor the Borg are horrifying. Like, True. The Borg would fucking, like, really fuck people up. Like, people would be terrified of the Borg. As they should be. Like, later on, like, the Borg kind of get, like, contained a little more... Like, like Janeway fucks them up a bit, so they kind of like are like, "Oh, we gotta, we gotta rethink this whole thing, right?" But Janeway I don't know. Like, uh, besides that, like the Jem'Hadar <laughs> are pretty scary. Like, 
Just shit like that would freak I think, people out. I think, I think space viruses would probably get to me a little bit more. Like, the stuff that, like, rewrites your genetic code and turns you into a spider. <laughs> well, that's... Well, I mean, I understand why you feel that way. Yeah, or it turns me into what the fuck ever. Like, some horrible brainless monster. You get turned into a lemur like Captain Picard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that would be scary. But, like, I, I, I wouldn't be afraid of that because, like, that's a... A future where like they can just conquer anything like everything is conquer that's true disease wise right the borg are conquerable yeah but the borg are like a macro virus like they're they just, always like, come a, back to yeah they're always like gonna show up again and like they're always better like that's the thing is like you have to you have to stay one step ahead of them and that's so hard i would be afraid of the leaders of my colonies out on the edge of Federation space being too fucking stupid to realize yeah. we could move all of our people Here away. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be most afraid of that. <laughs> and then, of course, Captain Cisco of... blows my fucking planet up or whatever. He just nukes my planet. Uh oh. Because I can't live here for 50 years. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Transporter accidents would probably like weird me out a little bit. Like I don't know. I don't think anything in the future of Star Trek is so unbelievably scary that it would dissuade me from wanting to live there. Yeah, no. I I would definitely uh, because you could always just be like Pulaski and be like, I don't want to take the transport, right? Like you can yeah, just do that. I'll just take a shuttle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean nothing would freak me out like that badly. Because it would, it would be worth it. That's definitely a future that's worth it. I wish we lived there. Me too. <sighs> but we live in this stupid one. That this, sucks fucking dick. This sucko time fucking sucks. Well, on that happy note, <laughs> we have completed all of our emails tonight. Oh my god, we I did I didn't it. even edit any of them, I don't think. <laughs> no, you didn't. Um, Good job. I'd like to thank everybody who wrote in. And everybody who may write into the future to mclassemail at gmail.com, singular. Mclass email. I'd, I'd like to thank everybody who just listens. And if you're on the fence about writing into us, please do. Just do it. If you're a new fan, we'd love to hear from you. We love hearing from people who are enjoying what we're doing. And if you're a Russian robot, keep up the good work. You're really <laughs> fucking things up over here. You definitely tricked me into going to Ning.com. I definitely gave you all of our financial information. Check out our uh, promo code at Ning.com slash Trekboys. <laughs> don't go there. Please don't ever go there. Do not click that. Uh, also, if you would like to advertise on our show, fucking yeah, we'll do yeah, we'll it. We'll do it. We'll read your stuff. We'll make it, put it in the show. You gotta pay us. You gotta pay us money. Talk to our uh, our representative. What's her name? The Russian robot. <laughs> fucking uh, Nina something. I don't Yola remember now. Yola Yolanda Yol Yolandi from Yana Yana Demidenko. Contact Yana Yana Demidenko. Don't contact Yana Demidenko. No. Contact our representative, me. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for tuning in, and we will be back in one week with more M Class goodness. Bye. Bye bye. bye.